Hi, Lisa Gifford here. And today I'm going to show you how to make a Christmas tree skirt. And we're going to be doing that with the Martelli wedge templates. Martelli has two wedge templates, a 48 and a 60. So the difference in making these two different Christmas tree skirts would be the amount of fabric that you're going to be needing. If you're going to be making it with the 48, which you will probably need, well, depending on how many different colors that you want. If you're doing a tree skirt with maybe two different colors, you're probably going to need about a yard and a quarter of fabric for each color. So you'll need a yard and a quarter of one color, a yard and a quarter of another. So you would need two different colors. If you're going to be doing three different colors or four different colors, it'll be a little bit less. You're basically going to be cutting out a total of 24 wedges. So if if you're going to be doing, say, two, you're going to be cutting out 12 of each color. If you're going to be doing three, you're going to be cutting out eight of each color. If you're going to be doing four, six of each color. So you'll need less fabric for that. If you're, now you've got another decision to make. Are you going to be doing it with a binding or without a binding? Are you going to do it as a stitch and flip? Do you want to do a prairie point? So we're going to go over all those different ways to finish to make your Christmas tree skirt. So what are supplies needed? You're going to need your fabrics. You're going to need the Martelli templates, whichever one you're going to be working on. Of course, if you're working with the 60, you're going to need more fabric. I think for the 60, if you're doing a two color, you're probably going to need about two yards of each fabric. You're going to need, of course, your rotary color. If you're going to be doing pins, lots of pins, because you're going to be pinning it, and maybe even using a safety pin might be better if you're going to be doing uh, where you're putting it sandwiching it all together. I'm still a big fan of using basting spray, so use your basting spray. Um, you're going to need a backing. I'm using just a simple muslin, and this one is a 60-inch muslin, so it's, it was 60 inches wide, so I got a big square of it. So it's going to be big enough for my 48. Now, if I'm doing the 60, I'm going to need bigger, so I'll probably have to get something that's, you know, 72 inches or something. I need it to be bigger all the way around. So I'm using just a muslin. You can do whatever you want for the back side of it. And then if you want, you know, here's an option. Some people might not want the thickness of their Christmas tree skirt to be all this thickness with having the batting in it. So you can do the batting or not do the batting. Or say if you're doing polar fleece or a decorative um, Shannon fabrics instead, like this one is a stitch and flip. Well, there's no batting in here. It's just beautiful polar fleece, the fleece or the uh, Shannon fabric and the backing. So it's already heavy enough so you don't need to have that batting. So it depends on what kind of materials you're going to be using if you want to use a piece of batting. So if I'm doing, say, a stitch and flip, and I'll talk about that, I would need 60 inches of, and I'm doing the 48, I would need 60 inches of the batting, 60 inches of the backing, and then my pieces. So you're going to need, make a decision on how you want it to be. Now I've got a couple samples here. This one here is similar to what I'm getting ready to show you. This is just a simple cutting out 12 of each colors with the, with the triplet having my backing, having my batting. This was sandwiched like any other quilt. But then when I did my binding, I cut my binding on the bias, or you can buy bias tape already cut, ready to go, and you just put your binding on it. You're sewing all your pieces together, making a big, huge circle. So, and then you just don't sew those last two pieces together, and then you lay it out. So I'm going to show you one where it's all sewn. This is one all sewn. I just cut out 12 of one color, 12 of another, and I just started stitching them together. And you might want to be sure to use a tighter, closer stitch, seam stitch. So like, typically I want to say it's like a 0.8. You want a really close stitch because if you're not paying attention, it can easily come undone. So you want to be sure to have a really tight stitch so it doesn't come undone. So that's basically just sewing all the way around, cutting out each of your wedges, and then not sewing the last two pieces together. So after you have that done, then you're just going to lay it out just like you do a quilt. So I'm going to show you another way that you might want to do your pieces. So after you cut it out, you might want to have more of a prairie point look. 
So how do we do that? So you got your pieces that you've cut. So here's a wedge cut with the 48. Here's one. So how do we get it to have that look right there? Well, you're going to take your piece, and we'll go to the sewing machine and I'll show you how it's done. You're going to take a piece, and you're going to fold it right sides together. And then you're just going to sew across, about a quarter of an inch, straight across. So Zeke's going to follow me to the sewing machine, and we're going to do a couple of them. I'm going to show you how it's done. So I've got it folded in half right here and I'm going to sew it a quarter of an inch all the way across. So when you sew it the next thing you're going to do is you're just going to open it up. Push out that point, and now it makes that, it's a finished edge. So you could do this one where it would be a little bit different, and then you just center it up, and then you just iron it down, and then you're going to sew up the edges. We're going to go right back over here, Zeke. And this is what I would do if I was doing a prairie point edge. I would sew them up. And this is one where I would probably use our seam assist and I would open up my seams. So then the only raw edges is going to be right here. So once I had all of my pieces all sewed all the way around, then I would just have my backing and my batting here and I would just stitch it stitch it down. So I might even use maybe a fleece or uh, something like or a flannel that would be something that I could have that's going to be on the bottom here and then I would stitch it all the way around right here. And if you wanted you could just continue going around with those circles and then give it a real pretty look. You know like maybe having circles every two inches as you're going all the way around. So that's another way that you could do your tree skirt if you wanted to have the prairie point look. This one here is done with, uh, with that fleece again. This is a flip and sti uh, a stitch and flip it. So what they had done was they laid the backing on top of their stitched piece, stitched it all the way around, left an opening and flipped it out. So how would you do that on not maybe using the fleece? So I'm gonna pull this one up, just stay right there, Z. So this one here is almost ready to go. This one is actually laid out to be done where it's like going to be done with a, like a quilt. So what I had done is I just basted it with some basting spray. So I got my backing, I laid my batting on, and then I laid out my pieces that's all sewed. It's getting a little wrinkled because it's been traveling with me. So then this is one that I would quilt this. What I would do, I would just maybe do a stitch in the ditch or maybe do some circles or do whatever. I wouldn't have my circle cut out yet. I would get all my quilting done first and then I would trim it and then you would put on your binding just like this one is done. And if you'll see, didn't even bother putting ties on here because this is just kind of just draped on the floor. You can add ties if you want, like this one here. You can add the ties and just have it mounted, you know, attach them just between the binding on the back side. So it'd be real easy to add that, the, add the ties to it. Now, if I want to do a stitch and flip, the layout would be different. I would lay my batting down first, then I would lay my quilt top next. And then I would take the backing, my piece of muslin, and it's what's going to go on top, right sides together. Now this is one where I would not do, I would probably baste this to the backing, to the batting, 
But then when I go to do this piece, you can see it through and I would pin it and then I would trim it and then I would sew all the way around it, leaving an opening so I could flip it out. So that's how you would lay it out for doing a stitch and flip. And then all you'd have to do is just maybe do some, um, just do some edge sewing all the way around to just, you know, hold, you know, top stitch it, you would just top stitch it. So I would not have a too dark of a bottom piece because I want to be able to see through it. So my see-through is right here. I would have this all laid out. Then I would trim it, sew it all the way around the edges. And what I mean by that is I would be sewing all the way around, coming all the way around, up all the way around here, up and out, because then you're gonna be cutting. Then you'd flip it, then you would trim all this out and then you would flip it all out. So that's, that's how you do a stitch and flip and then you would just do a top stitch. And then you could just follow it up with some stitching like in the ditch or something like that. So that's how you would do that kind. So there's, this is probably one of the fastest, easiest projects that you could do for Christmas because it's a lot of repetition. You're just cutting a lot of the strips, sewing them together in the design or the order that you want. You just gotta decide, do I wanna have a binding on it? Do I wanna stitch and flip it? Do I wanna have a prairie point? Do I want it to just have decorative on the edges? You could also um, put you know, taggles or tassels or little balls or just anything, any kind of decoration that you'd want to decorate this up here. So there's all kinds of ways to do this tree, tree skirt to make it yours. Any kind of colors that you'd want it to be. Um, just something just fun to do. So I hope this helped you in doing your tree skirt with the Martelli wedge templates. Uh, again, at the fabric that you're gonna need, about a yard, a yard and a quarter. If you're gonna do two colors less, if you're gonna be doing more colors, if you're doing the 60, you're gonna need probably about two yards if you're doing two colors, two yards of each color. Thank you again for joining us today. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at quiltingwithlisa at gmail.com. Be sure to check us out at martellinotions.com and pick up your wedge templates and any other supplies that you might need. Have a wonderful holiday season. Bye-bye.